Now a very important feature of ER diagrams is this notion of a cardinality of a relation. Now a cardinality refers to how many instances per entity participate in the relation. Now we could have either one to one uh, participation, one to many which is denoted one to n, or many to one which could be m to one or n to one, and finally we can have many to many. Typically either one m or n goes between the the entity and the relation on one side which says m number of faculty participate and the n value here for many to many uh, goes between the relation and the other entity. Well what this means is that we're saying many faculty might teach one student and one faculty member might teach many students so we denote this as many to many. Now this is important and you'll see in a later video when we do database design we need to consider the cardinality because it impacts whether or not we can use foreign keys. Scrolling down we have the idea of total or partial participation in a relationship. Now the <coughs> intent here is uh, let's say we have the employee and they enroll in some type of insurance plan. Well in a lot of companies what happens every employee has to uh, enroll in an insurance plan. So let's say there are 100 employees but there might be five insurance plans. So what this means is all instances for this particular entity in terms of employees are enrolled in some type of insurance plan. That's why we have this double line here. Now if <clears throat> if we look over here we see there is no double line because what could happen is all hundred employees might roll in the same insurance plan, let's say uh, Aetna, and none of the employees might uh, enroll in Prudential Insurance. So there could be a total participation both ways, but in this example we're only seeing uh, going one way. If the insurance was an optional feature for employees, then this would not necessarily be total participation. Now scrolling down at the bottom of page 7, what I show here is some additional notation. I've, look, <coughs> I've looked through quite a few textbooks and there are different ways of representing a lot of these concepts that I've showed you so far. And one way is to show kind of a one-to-many with a single line for one and kind of a line with crow's feet to show many. And this means there's, you know, mandatory one, mandatory many. This is optional one or optional many. So in this example here to show many students enroll in many courses, the many to many what we had before, we see these crow's feet on both sides. Now what we will do in this class, I just bring this to your attention but I'm expecting you not to use this uh, notation just so we're all working in the same format and I'd be most appreciative. Let's talk about something called weak entities. A weak entity does not have a primary key in and of itself and it really depends upon a strong entity and it doesn't exist unless the strong it doesn't exist if the strong entity doesn't exist and the weak entity has total participation in the relationship and typically it is one to many so one account for example might have uh, many transactions and we, we, we have a transaction log and so the idea is the account here is the strong entity the weak entity is shown by a double line total participation by the double line there and a double line around the relation here so there might be multiple transactions for a given account and if, if a particular count one two three goes away then all those transactions will go away and if we go down <clears throat> well here's one of the questions that uh, comes up frequently when you're doing ER diagrams 
and that is when do you make something an entity and when do you make something an attribute. So here we have an example where student lives at some address and the student has a social security number, name, age, and so forth. So we see this student as an entity and lives at addresses, street, city, state, zip. Now would we want to do something like this design or would we want to design where we make the student an entity and the address not an entity but instead make it an attribute. So one of the things that we think about is whether or not the address would be mapped as a separate table or would we rather make it maybe as one or more attributes uh, for a given table. So <clears throat> in this case the answer is given below but we would want to do the latter design in this case having address. Now let me give you another example that's not here in the notes. Think about uh, you know phone. If we had students they might have uh, you know a, a phone attribute which would make sense because we're really more focused on the object of student. But if you work for the phone company then you might have the phone in that case as an entity where you'd have the phone, the ID for the phone, the color of the phone, the year that it's made, whether it's a uh, uh, rotary type of phone, is it a French style phone, and in that case the phone would be an entity as opposed to an attribute. So the context would help better decide whether to make something an entity or an attribute. Now, <clears throat> defining a domain is, for an attribute is not a trivial task. So let's say we were working with uh, gender. And you'd say, well, male and female are obvious values for that. But if you happen to be an archaeologist and you discover a dinosaur fossil, then you might not necessarily know the gender. You'd have to do something and have a category called unknown. So we would like to have all possible values known but you know that may or may not necessarily be the case. 